Hi, my name's Freddie Wilkins. I'm a fully qualified British ski instructor based in the Three Valleys in the French Alps. Today we're going to look at my top tips for your first day skiing. The first thing we're going to look at is clothing. Most people use a three layer system. You want some sort of thermal base layer, uh, normally a synthetic or a merino fabric. Personally, I prefer merino. You want to avoid cotton. Cotton gets cold when wet and it stays cold. It'll keep you cold on the mountain. Then you want some sort of mid layer, usually a type of fleece or puffer jacket is good. For your third and final layer, you want some sort of good quality waterproof ski jacket. These cover lots of different uh, shapes and sizes and variations, either insulated or just an outer shell. With gloves, you want something nice and waterproof and warm. And if you struggle with the cold, mittens are always warmer than gloves. You also want some decent quality waterproof ski salopettes. Only Parisians wear jeans. Although it's not a legal requirement, it's a really good idea to wear a helmet to stay safe. If you don't have your own, you can usually rent these from where you get your skis and boots. One item of clothing people tend to forget is some sort of snood or buff. This is really useful when it's cold or windy to keep your face nice and warm. Personally, I really like the air hole buffs because you can tuck them into your goggles and they don't steam up. They're also great for robbing a bank. Probably the most important piece of equipment you're gonna wear are your boots. We have a video explaining on how to put them on and get them fitted just here. The only thing you want to have in your ski boots are your ski socks. Make sure you don't have any thermals in there. Personally, I like to get three quarter length thermals um, so they don't go on my boots. If you do have full length thermals, you can always just roll them up. Make sure the elasticated strap doesn't go in your boot. It goes on the outside to keep the snow out. Next, we're gonna look at how to carry our skis. Firstly, put one of the skis on the bottom. Doesn't matter which, they're symmetrical. Then the other one goes on top. Make sure you pick up the toe piece of the ski on the bottom. And then you can do this. If you pick up the one on the top, this will happen. Okay, once I picked it up, I want it in a position so I can swing it like that. That means I can walk around with it. That means I can rest my arm also if I'm in a lift queue. If you've got longer to walk, the best way to carry our skis is over our shoulder. To start with, put your poles in the snow so you can use two hands. Put your skis to the side, you can take them like this with two hands, up, over on the shoulder. And then the most important thing is to keep our hands forwards at the front. Put the bottom ski here on the top and that way it won't move. If it's the other way around, quite often this can happen, which is annoying. Okay, if it does, you can always just flip it back over. Before we start skiing, you want to make sure that you're skiing in the right areas. For your first day, you want to find somewhere as flat as possible. In North America and France, green slopes will be the easiest. Other European countries, blue slopes will be the lowest level. You want to find a beginner's area, ideally somewhere next to a magic carpet will probably be the best place. Another top tip is you don't necessarily need to buy a full ski pass on your first day. There's lots of beginner areas that are free, normally next to magic carpets. Check out the lift pass options in your area. In Courchevel, for example, you can get the mini pass for the day, which is much cheaper and gives you access to most of the green ones. When putting on our skis, we always want to start by putting the downhill ski on first. If it's a bit snowy like it is today, I always like to get the snow off just by tapping on the front binding. You can alternatively hit the bottom of your boot with your pole. Okay, make sure it's in. Find the bottom of the heel in the middle, push down. Make sure you hear that click. Once you hear that click, you know it's on correctly. If you don't hear the click, it could come off whilst you're skiing. Let's just practice this with the one ski first. Let's have a look at taking it off. Okay, make sure we get the tip right in the bottom of that trough and push down and lift up at the same time. Now our ski is off. It's always a good idea to put on our pole straps. If you don't have the straps on and you fall over, you might have to walk a long way back up the mountain to go and get them. If you hold your straps like this by putting your hand down and then holding on, that can actually be dangerous because if you fall, it can pull on your thumb like that and you can injure yourself. Ah, my thumb! The best way Hand up like that, open the thumb and finger, over the top, super strong and stable grip. In this position, if I fall, it's gonna pull on my wrist and I'll be safe.
Now we've sorted out all of the admin, let's finally start skiing. We'll start by clipping in one ski, start on one ski, and let's just have a little walk around. Okay, walk around on one ski, see how it feels. See if you can keep your weight in the front of your boot, bending down, squishing into the front. Okay, you always use the front of your, your boot to support yourself. Have a little walk around, see how it feels. You'll feel that it's slippery and slidey. We're getting used to this sensation. Keeping our weight forwards, try and slide along. And eventually, once you're comfortable, see if you can find a small slope, putting your ski down the mountain, and see if you can just balance on one ski. Use the front of your boot. We don't want to use the back of our boot, ever. Once you've skied around on one ski for a while, let's take it off and swap it over. Skis are symmetrical, so you can put any ski on any foot. Gosh. We want to do the same on both feet. Once we're happy sliding around on one ski, let's put both skis on. It's always good to use our poles to help. So we've got three points of contact, clip in. Generally on the first day, our poles kind of get in the way. We want to just be focusing on what our skis are doing. So for this next step, let's leave our poles at the bottom, or if you have to take them with you, I want you to hold them in the middle. Once we've got two skis on, we can start walking around. Have a feel of what it's like, keeping your balance, see how it feels, keep your weight in the front of the boot. You'll find if you want to go uphill, you start walking, it's not going to happen. There's two ways you can walk uphill, okay? Let's get a duck foot shape. We're using our edges to go up, okay? All the way on one foot, all the way on the other foot, like this. And doing this, you can get up pretty much everything. Okay, once it gets a bit steeper, we can have a little look at sidestepping, okay? To sidestep, we want all of our weight on the downhill, all of our weight on the other leg, okay? A really common mistake people make is they, they can't seem to walk up, fully load that leg, and then you'll be able to go up sideways. All the weight on this leg using this edge, get those edges in, small steps. Once we've found a, a nice small little slope like this with a nice flat runoff, we can do our first little slide, okay? We want to be in a nice forward position, bending our knees always into the front of our boot. Okay, straight back, weight forwards. Okay, and we're going to make small steps to turn. Okay, stay balanced, bending into the front of the boot, and stay parallel and let the terrain slow you down. First bit of skiing, fantastic. For the next part of our video, and arguably the most important, we want to know how to stop. We're going to start by doing a snow plow. We want to open our legs out into a triangle and resist against these two inside edges. That's what's going to be stopping us. Okay, pushing against those two edges, creating that resistance. The wider the snow plow, the more resistance you're going to have. I'm pushing my legs away from me, opening them up, and at the same time, I'm pointing my toes together, keeping my tips pointing towards each other. It's good to get this movement pattern and practice it a few times before we actually do it on a slope. Just practicing pushing those legs away. So once we've got used to that movement pattern on the flat, let's take it onto a small slope. Okay, so point our skis down the mountain, parallel to start with, and then open them up symmetrically, resisting against those two inside edges. And that's how we stop, simple as that. Once you're comfortable stopping just using your skis for our poles, we want them in front of us like this with the tips of our poles behind us, okay? If you hold your poles like this, we don't want to be doing that. If you fall, boom, you could injure yourself. Ah. If you do fall over, make sure you get your skis below you, okay? So, in this position, for example, or this position, oh, put your feet in the air. It always helps if you lie on your back. Okay, get them below you. If you try and get up in this position, you're gonna slide forwards. If you try and get up in this position, you're gonna slide backwards. Make sure your skis are 90 degrees, perpendicular to the slope. Keep your hands forwards. Try and get as small as possible. Okay, and then we can stand back up again. 
if it's really flat, it's actually harder to get up when it's flat. If you can't get up, just take off the uphill ski like this, okay? And then you can put it back on. If your downhill ski has fallen off, okay, don't try and put the downhill ski on like this, okay? It just goes away from you. Pick up your ski, okay, come round like this. Now I've got my downhill ski on, it's gonna be way easier to put my ski on. One final and really important thing to consider if you fall is often your binding might be up like this. No matter how hard you try and put the ski on, it won't go in. You just put that down and you're good to go. So make sure the binding is always down. I've been Freddie Wilkins. If you want to progress your skiing further, check out some more videos on this YouTube channel. You can book a ski or snowboard lesson with me directly through Maison Sport.